What's up, everybody? Okay, 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 okay. <clears throat> okay, hi guys. So, I know I've kept you waiting for quite some time and actually because it was never my intention to make a tutorial of this. I did want to make a tutorial about something completely different first, but, um, well, before I maybe uh, explain that, you should know, you you thinking all the time already, he's fucking out of focus. Because this image that you see now will be soon on the lower right side of the screen. The main thing will be the Da Vinci surface. I think focus is overrated anyway. Besides, if I have to say something important, I will come close and then I am in focus. First of all, this thing was a test which I made because we wanted to shoot a new documentary thing we did, our studio did, which wanted to mix the Black Magic and the GH5. Uh, the GH5 is a studio on camera that we have, the Black Magic we rented. We wanted to shoot with Zeiss lenses and I simply wanted to know if I shoot with the Zeiss Distagon Primes, can I get quite easy with too much, without too much headache, can I make it look the same. This is not really a grade that I would usually do for a client. I did the whole setup very, very quick. I only wanted to see two things, like can I get the same uh, tonal skin tones, can I get the same kind of feel in sharpness. And I didn't even care too much like finding a specific look because I didn't know, we didn't shoot the documentary yet, I didn't really care about the look. So I chose something very punchy Michael Bay-like so I can see if I can push it kind of far and still get the same look. Before we start, there is one thing. Um, in the basement, there lives a guy. His name is Rimpy. Now, Rimpy is not the regular fellow. And he strongly advised not to charge any money for the LUT. It's still for free. Not to charge any money for any kind of services, but no. <sighs> Let's give him some screaming time. No. <laughs> no. Insanity is when you do the same thing over and over again and you expect a different outcome. <laughs> This guy up there, he thinks he's a filmmaker. You don't have to pay for this tutorial. There's no Patreon, there's no PayPal, shmooly wooly monetization, all this. You can just take the tutorial, download the LUT, <laughs> if you think it's worth anything. <laughs> the only thing I want you to do in the next week, one thing that you kept pushing ahead in your life, that you procrastinate, something you wanted to stop doing in your life, something you wanted to start doing in your life, and then you never did, you will do it. Choose anything, stop smoking, taking out your girlfriend or whatever for dinner or a drink, but do it. And then write it down there in the comments, okay? So now go back up and do your tutorial. Okay, bye. Whoa. As crazy as he is, Rimpy is right. Go out, something that you procrastinated for a long time about, do it. That's the only payment for this tutorial. Let's go. Okay, so, ah, uh, here we are. We have here the footage of the, of the black magic which is set to uh, film profile, to the, to the picture profile film. Now, the first thing that I did, starting off the bat, and it was my first time I worked with the Blackmagic uh, Cinema Pocket Camera, I uh, introduced here the LUT, which is basically... Uh, this is taking a while with the recording, okay. It's from Blackmagic Design. It is a Blackmagic 4K film to extend video version 4 LUT, okay? So when I switch that on, okay, I'm getting this, okay? You see it's still kind of a bit on the more overexposed side, definitely. 
Okay, then the next thing that I did, now I have to explain, if I have to do something quick and it's not really like a professional work for a client, like a commercial or like documentary or whatever, anything, but it's something kind of like a quick fix or something uh, fast to go. Uh, I, I like to do it like in hip hop music where you take an existing track and you remix it, you sample it and you, you mash it up and make something new from it. Or also like in cooking, you have leftovers from the day before and then you just improvise something around that leftovers. So not saying that it's leftovers because it's actually a great lot. It's from a Film Riot. Really nice what they're doing. And their LUT pack is actually really good. And I used that one as a, uh, as a starter. So what I did here is I took, uh, because I looked, as I said in the beginning, for something punchy, something more aggressive. I put the Blackmagic BMD film Moonlight, which is part of uh, their LUT pack, uh, onto my grate for the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K. And then what we got is this. Okay, this still looks very awful, but we're not there yet. So, the bass, uh, I usually do bass one, bass two, which it's like my own way to organize in my head how I distribute which correction goes where. Bass is really the most prime things, like the primary wheels, anything that's like considered to be like the most basic corrections. Base two is connected to that, but it usually also involves for me like uh, more the contrast things. If I have a uh, color boost, like other small things, it's not lock yet. Lock usually I have in a separate one afterwards, uh, saturation separately. Uh, and there is the LUT we talked about. This I will come uh, later to. Now, um, actually, this we can talk already about now. This I do as soon as I have people in the frame, always. It's basically nothing else than having a small little um, power window that I can move over uh, skin color and then isolate and switch on that power window to see that power window only. And then I can see if I go to my vector scope, I can see whether I'm really on the skin line or not, which we should put on so you can see it. Okay, I'm here now. It's totally off. Like here we have the skin line and well, that's where we are. My first base is taking down the lift to minus six, the gamma to minus 12 and push up the gain to 107. Still looking like, oh Jesus, like more yellowish, still far from being good. With the base two, what I did is uh, they're actually really like I did this very, very fast and left out many steps that I would usually do. So don't actually really do this. Just download the lot. No, I'm kidding. You, you, you wanted to know it, you get to know it. Okay, so base two, actually the only thing is I went for some mid-tone detail. I was sharpening the mid-tone detail with like plus 30. For the rest, I didn't do anything in that window. Now, if I'm going and switch on the, we are still way off. If we look at the color, the skin color is, it, it looks to the eye. I don't even need the vector scope. It just looks wrong. So the next thing I did is it was way oversaturated for me in this moment. So the saturation actually is not adding anything. As you can see, I took the saturation down, which immediately changes the picture quite a lot. We're really getting there now. That's, that, that's looking quite okay. Now, after that, this one I not always but very often do. This is basically taking off, if we go to, okay, we have luminance versus saturation. I usually take here uh, the preset points for the lower end and the high end, and then not all the way, but taking down like 70-80% the saturation, so to have the blacks and the real highlights desaturated, which also gives me a more filmic feeling in the role of, in terms of colors. Okay. Now, the last thing I did is because it still had a yellowish tint to it, even though the white balance was set right. So in this window here, I should have named that, which allows it to do. You can call it tint or white balance. Um, Depending on what I do, I call it either one. 
And if I switch that on, you see now it starts to look right. Basically, what I did here is, again, it's not much. I only changed um, the temperature, which was before zero. I just cooled it down and took it to minus 320, just by experimenting and with the help of our little skin color checker here. And the tint was a little bit on the greenish side, so I uh, took that to eight to counterbalance the green tint. Okay, now let's go uh, to the GH5 and see if we can get it more or less the same. So the first thing I, I did, I took again the LUT, the, but this time the V-Log version of the film ride LUT called Moonlight. Okay, let's put it on. Now, <clears throat> you see immediately it's, it's uh, pretty obvious we are... Um, we are, I, I will show you uh, with our other one, we are in roughly in the right direction, but still far away from it. So the next thing I did, um, I corrected some base notes again. I mean, I went here in the primary wheels, minus three, minus one in the gamma, and then again, like 1.11, okay, to, to get on the parade kind of the same values than we had in our black magic grade okay i adjusted also with base two i went in and did the same actually the sharpness looks pretty much the same then which i was surprised because actually black magic is supposed to be softer but i did the same mid-tone detail pushing it to 30. Uh, what I added also was uh, a lock because I immediately noticed at this point that the blacks in this settings on the black magic were stronger, deeper, and it was really more closer to full black than here in the GH5. Uh, but I didn't want to take the primaries down anymore because it would change the overall feel, so I added the lock which as you can see here, when we switch to log, I went pretty harshly down minus 022 in the shadows, okay? So, now uh, comes the detail stuff, because if, when you can see now, if it switch it on and off, left is the GH5 and right is our black magic, here everything is more in a way reddish, especially in the skin area. So actually what I did is very simple. I only added a temperature 70, from zero to 70. So I went warmer and I added a, a tint of 2.5, okay? Um, also, I went into the hue versus hue, selected the skin cones and pulled them a little bit down. So I would, if I switch it off, you can see on my skin tones, I get back the reddish in my face. As you can see, we, we're getting closer now, but uh, something was oddly off here. So actually, uh, next thing I did, because if we look at both side by side, it feels now actually that it's like kind of too, too warm, especially back here. So next thing I added tint two which I took things down again. So after changing, that's why I couldn't do it in the same, the skin color, in the next note, you can see it's cooling my result down a bit again, which went temperature minus 150. So I went into the opposite direction now. And tint, I added five, okay? Now we're getting closer, closer and closer, but something was still not the same. Um, so what I did is I actually took the tint another time, uh, added some hue versus hue. I think if I look through, this is basically what I did. Yes, just a tiny hue versus hue to shift these colors a little bit again, the skin colors. And as you can see, we are just like in the other one, like this is the skin tone line and I kept it a little bit more in the yellow, like just under, okay? So we are now having the same skin tone than in our black magic. Uh, then I just added some saturation. If you see, I boosted it a little bit because I felt side by side that here I was a bit more pale and it's hard to be pale in the Middle East. I can tell you that. It was a bit more pale than here. So I bumped a little bit the, 
the saturation and actually um, I do this not the usual way. For some reason, I, I do think it was once uh, Aram K. Shout out to Aram because I think that if it was a finding of him, it's a very good one. So basically, um, I took, I go into the RGB mixer, I push reds, greens and blues to one, to full. Now, if I set this here to one, you will see this is way over the top. That's like, holy, okay? It's like 80s music video. But now I'm toning it down with the key output. So from one, I took it to 0.2. And then I actually got, see, it's pushing it just so slightly, little, little, little bit, okay? Uh, I did in the end what I call he low, high low. That's just my way of shortcutting it. Uh, I added here the, no, uh, here I added again in the curves lumis, lum, lu, 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 luminance versus saturation. I took down the lows and the highs a little bit uh, in the curve. That's it. Now you actually have to just make sure you make sure you do the thing, you know, if you followed until the end now, you really should do the, whatever it was, not smoking for a week, for a month, taking your girlfriend out to dinner, uh, the bum that on the other side of the street of your studio or workplace that you always thought like, I should one day give him like 20 bucks. Nah, do that now. Um, again, thanks for all of you guys watching because my first bigger tutorial I wanted to do about something completely else and the view counts of this 25,000 kind of completely messed with my plans. Well, have a great time. Enjoy yourself. Uh, enjoy the lot. Still, you can download it for free. You can, uh, if you have any questions, please shoot. Just uh, don't be mad if I don't answer immediately because I, we, we have quite a lot to do. And uh, no, I will not say press the like button if you saw this. No, you can do whatever you fucking feel like, seriously. Have a great day. Be nice to each other, people. Bye.